Uh, good morning. It's great to be here at training camp in St. Joe. Um, I've had a chance to watch a couple practices this week, and I think the energy has been terrific. Uh, I know Coach Reed and his staff are delighted to be back here. They think the environment uh, is great here in terms of what they need to get done over the next three, three and a half weeks. Um, and uh, it's great also to have our, our fans here. I know the players appreciate it. It brings a level of energy uh, to the practices and uh, thought the guys did did a great job out there today and with that I'll open it up for questions. Yeah, so our relationship with Bayern Munich started uh, with our MLS club, FC Dallas. Uh, we established a partnership about four years ago uh, that was focused on youth player uh, development. Um, uh, they ended up buying a player from, from our academy named Chris Richards, uh, who just transferred to the uh, EPL. So it's been a very successful partnership. And as the NFL went through the process of making the decision to, to go to Germany. Obviously, Bayern's really the biggest sporting brand in, in Germany, and so having that relationship was very advantageous uh, for us. Uh, we've talked for a number of years about hopefully the Chiefs having the opportunity to play in Allianz Arena. It's not going to happen this year, but uh, we hope here in the next couple of years that it will. Mark, this, this being an election year, I'm just wondering if you have a feeling about players taking a position endorsing a candidate or a you know, we encourage our players to be civically active, and um, you know that that's something they're doing as individuals on their own behalf. And I certainly applaud that. Uh, obviously, you know, politics is very divisive, and so they're going to pe be people on on both sides of the issue when a player endorses somebody. But we support their efforts and, and encourage them to get involved. A lot of new leadership uh, across the university and in the city. Um, just what's it been like kind of meeting some of the new folks within Missouri Western? And we heard from Mark a little bit Monday just kind of about the future of this agreement with St. Joseph and training camp here. Yeah. I guess what have those discussions been like on your end, just the future of camp in St. Joe? Yeah. <clears throat> well, we've been here uh, over a decade with the, uh, the, the one – exception during COVID, and it's uh, been fantastic uh, for the team. I mean, Andy and his staff have really enjoyed being here. I mentioned at the onset that they believe this environment is really conducive to getting the guys uh, ready. Uh, the university has been very responsive over the course of our decade, over the course of our relationship in terms of making changes uh, to help the experience be better. You know, you know, from my vantage point so far, this has been you know one of the best camps or starts to camp. It's something that will evaluate uh, once camp is done. We do that every year, and uh, certainly I hope we'll be back in, in the future. Clark, we, see a lot of, Clark, we see a lot of teams that decide to stay, you know, stay home. What advantages in your eyes is it being away from, from Kansas City? Yeah. <clears throat> Um, you're exactly right. I think we're one of six or seven teams now that, that goes away for camp as more and more have, have moved back to their facilities. I, I think there's a bonding process uh, that happens uh, when you, you put the team in a, a dorm room for three and a half weeks. You don't have the comforts of home. Um, uh, there's a chance to really focus on football, uh, not 24-7 because the guys do have some time off, but you know, probably you know 12 hours a day they're focused on football. They're together. They're talking about football they're encouraging each other to get better they have the interaction uh, with the coaches uh, throughout the day and, and also the rest of the staff so I really think it's a it's a positive and and hope that uh, we'll be able to come back as I mentioned Yeah. Well, Patrick's uh, maturing uh, as a player and as a leader, and uh, he's somebody who, you know, very on, very early on, took a leadership role in our locker room. Um, he and Coach Reed and General Manager Brett Veach have a very special uh, relationship, and uh, I wouldn't say that I speak to him a lot about, uh, you know, the composition, the roster, but I, I know Coach Reed and Brett uh, keep him in the loop and listen to his opinion. 
um, he, he's very mature, really beyond his years, and sort of sees the, the big picture. And so they're glad to have his input. And obviously, you know, given his importance to the team, I think it's important that he, he have a word uh, or a say in the decisions that we're making. How do you, how do you see that maturation, you know, maybe this, these past few months um, in ways that sort of uh, still maybe impress you or that you can just tell that he's also growing in that sort of role within the organization? Yeah, I, I would really just say it's, you know, hearing secondhand uh, from Brett Veach about the conversations that they've had about the team. Um, I think that question would be better for, for Brett when you have a chance. I think he would give you a, a better answer on it. Um, but I, I would just go back to he, he understands uh, the, the big picture and is not, you know, real short-term focused in, it, in his thinking. Um, so, anyhow, I'll just leave it at that. I think he would be over the moon, uh, literally. Uh, I think you guys have heard me mention before that Arrowhead was his favorite place uh, on earth, and uh, he played such an important role in the growth of soccer in the United States going all the way back to the 1960s. Uh, he was a believer uh, long before others that the sport you know, would succeed here. Uh, I know he really enjoyed the 1994 World Cup uh, that came to the United States, but there weren't games in Kansas City. There were, were games in Dallas. Um, and as a family, we went to pretty much, you know, every venue uh, during that 94 World Cup. But I know he would be so excited to host games at Arrowhead, primarily for the fans, right? Uh, the fans in the Midwest are going to have a chance with a, with a short drive to come see uh, world-class soccer and really one of the greatest spectacles in the world. Um, seats can come out, come back in, come out, come back in over a two-year period. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think we have a good good plan on that. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have to be very uh, uh, focused on the timeline to make sure we get it done. That's why it's gonna happen over a two-year period. Um, it, we do have to alter the stadium so we can put in a regulation size soccer field. Aaron, it seems like every team has an alternate helmet or different colored jerseys. Why is it so important for you all to keep the traditional look that you have now? Yeah. Well, uh, part of our mission statement uh, is to honor tradition, and part of that tradition is uh, the Chiefs' colors, red, white, and, and, the, and the gold stripe. Um, my dad was always very, very focused on making sure that uh, our uniform stayed consistent, which if you go all the way back to the beginning, it's changed uh, uh, very little. Uh, I think you know a fan, no matter where they are, whether in the United States or now overseas, when they see the red and gold, they know exactly what team that is. And uh, I think that's just very important for the brand. Last two, Sam, quick, last time we spoke to you on the, the stadium stuff, you guys were beginning stages of the study to figure out you know, the current composition of it if it needed to be rebuilt. I just wondered what the early findings so far and what the process is right now. Yeah, uh, that process is ongoing. Um, uh, yeah, we're very hopeful that uh, we'll be able to renovate uh, Arrowhead when the time comes, uh, but we're probably still, you know, a year plus away from being able to make that determination. Uh, it's not a very, what I've learned through the process is it's not a very simple answer when you're trying to make a, a decision about whether a building can go another 25 or 30 years starting in eight years from now. Yeah, so, you know, we're being very methodical about it. We want to get to the right answer because it's it's very important. I just want to make sure I understood that, but you're hopeful that you would be able to stay there and renovate the current structure of the building. Yeah. Uh, yes, that would be our number one priority. We're going to evaluate all, all the options, obviously. We, we've got to figure out what's best for the franchise, what's best for the fan base. Um, but it starts with evaluating your ahead, and that's where we are right now. Uh, yeah, um, I, I know he and Brett uh, have very frequent communication uh, because you know when I'm speaking to, to Brett on a weekly basis, you know he's had a conversation with, with Pat about something that's uh, important to the team. So I think that communication between the two of them is is very unique and special. And then obviously you know he and Andy are talking all the time. I think their conversations are more about scheme, you know, and, and what we can do to get get better on the field, what we can do, uh, you know, to to take on a specific opponent. 
uh, but they have a very close relationship. And then I would just go back to the fact that we have such a good relationship between our head coach and GM. So you, you've got you know, really the three most important people uh, associated with the team that are very close together. 